So, as many of you already know, and as I said in my PS5 review, the internal storage is just not enough space. Luckily, that's where the PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD slot comes in, giving you access to a range of competitively priced SSD options, rather than being limited to a more expensive storage expansion card like you get on the Xbox Series X and S. So what is the best SSD for everyone to use? The one that is easiest to install, packs impressive speeds and the durability to last for years alongside being, most importantly, competitively priced to be worthwhile. Well, I've tried a few and I think I've found the best one in this, the Corsair MP600 Pro LPX. So we're going to get it installed, I'm going to take you through it a bit more, and I'm going to tell you why this is the best SSD that you can get for your PS5. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to New Rising Media, your home of hands-on reviews and gloves off opinions about tech and gaming. I'm Jason England, all-round nerd journalist, and I thank you right there for taking the time out of your busy day to check out this video. Cheers. Right, so while I get this out of the box, I'm going to give you a couple of caveats. So I'm not saying this is the only great option out there. I've tested a few, including, I've actually got it here, a data or Additor, I don't know how to say it, Gamix S70. And these two have been great bar one thing, which is you have to install the heatsink. Now I know that installing a heatsink is pretty damn easy to do. And also if you do so, you can save yourself some money in the long run. But this is what I mean by saying what is the best SSD for everyone. As I learned on one of my older M2 SSDs, it's pretty easy to put the heatsink on the wrong way around. Like if the guide is not clear and you're doing that blokey thing of just not reading the instructions, then that can cause problems. And before you know it, you've got a ruined SSD. Well, I'm not on trial here. Don't you dare put me on trial for putting the heatsink on the wrong way. Whereas having something pre-installed like this two-sided heatsink on the MP600 Pro LPX essentially fixes that problem for you. And the second caveat is there are plenty of other SSDs that have pre-installed heat sinks like this one but looking at rrps this bad boy is cheaper coming in at 319 pounds whereas the equivalent sn850 weighs in at 450 quid plus the sequential read write speeds bragged about on here are slightly faster but with the difference being 100 megabytes per second or so you're not gonna notice that at all but anyway i digress i keep waving this about let's get this installed in this thing, let's get the console cover off. Good tip for which side the SSD goes in. It's always on the right side if the console is facing you. It's a lot easier with a disk drive version because it's the one with the drive on it. There we go. Time to get the Leatherman out. Consider this a how to change the SSD on your PS5. Even though I never had the patience for IT support with my family. There is the SSD tray. I'm gonna get the screw off at the 80. Make sure your little round nut thing is in there. And we're just gonna be careful to get it in. Click it in, screw it into place. And Bob's your uncle. And let's get this screwed back on. As you saw, the Corsair MP600 LPX sits pretty flush with the top of it. So for example, the Sabrent PS5 heatsink that I used with the XPG S70 won't fit something like this. However, the heatsink is big enough that you've got some pretty decent thermal management there anyway. So what kind of testing can I do to really put the Corsair MP600 LPX through its paces? Well, I don't have any sort of like super sophisticated benchmarking equipment and I'm nowhere near as talented as the incredible people that are able to do that. But what I can do is a pretty straightforward loading race between the three different methods that I've used to load games in the past. The internal storage, the XPG Gamix S70 and Sabrent heatsink combination, and of course the Corsair SSD. And just so we can get a diverse range of results to give you some more information about these we're going to do them across three games so number one we're going to use marvel spider-man mouse morales amazing game if you haven't played it yet but also it was one of the first ps5 games that i played that made me realize holy shit, the ps5 is really fast at loading games number two is Hitman 3. I wanted to go for a multi-platform game, something that hasn't necessarily been built specifically and optimized for the PS5. And number three, we're gonna load into Madagascar in Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection. Now I'll pick this one for two reasons. One, 
it's one of my favorite Naughty Dog games outside of the original Last of Us. And number two, given how frustratingly slow this game loaded on the PS4, I just wanted to see what this game was like loading on the PS5. Time for a voiceover, as you can see me squirreling away in time-lapse doing all of this testing. A quick lesson that I learned fast while testing both the Corsair MP600 LPX and the Adata Gamix SPGS70 with the Sabrin heatsink is that no matter what the sequential read-write speeds they brag on their websites are, the reality doesn't necessarily match up to it. It's not a deal breaker, it's just a thing to keep in mind, like here are the speeds for the Corsair SSD and then here is the speeds for the XPG S70 Gamix. So what you can see me doing here is loading into a particular part of Brooklyn on Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, loading into Dubai on Hitman 3, and loading into the car chase encounter in Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection. And as you can see, the control test using the internal SSD gave us some pretty impressive speeds. So Spider-Man loaded in 4.88 seconds, Hitman in 8.87, and Uncharted in 3.51. Moving on over to the Adata SSD with the Sabrin heatsink, Spider-Man loaded in 4.9 seconds, so just 200 slower. Hitman loaded two seconds slower, which is quite an outlier when you take a look at the fact that Uncharted was just two temps behind the internal SSD. So definitely slower, but not to the point that I wouldn't recommend this to somebody who is looking for a cheaper SSD. This one is usually on sale, along with the heatsink to ensure that things are kept nice and cool in there too. So after testing it with the Adata SSD, I just kind of assumed that the Corsair would also be a little bit slower than the internal storage. So imagine my surprise when I got these numbers. Spider-Man loaded five hundredths of a second quicker. Hitman was one hundredth of a second quicker. And Uncharted was just two temps slower. So definitely faster than the Adata XPG Gamix S70 SSD with the Sabrin PS5 heatsink. And it's fair to say that in real world use, you are barely gonna tell the difference between using the MP600 SSD and the internal storage. So what have I figured out with this very basic test of mine. Well, the speed differences between the internal storage and the Corsair MP600 LPX are negligible. The loading speed is still mighty impressive across either of these and it confirms my suspicion that the better affordability the absolute ease of installing this ssd not having to fanny about installing a heat stink before you put it on the marginally faster speeds and the pretty decent thermal management of that massive heat sink on it means that this is in my opinion the best ssd you can get for your ps5 hands down so i've used a lot of great options, don't get me wrong, but this is my favorite all-in-one package. It makes for a worthwhile investment in drastically increasing the storage of your console. That whole problem you had of deciding what games to have on there and what games to not have and then having to reinstall everything, uninstall stuff, all of that is not a problem anymore. An NVMe SSD is an absolutely essential purchase for any PlayStation 5 gamer out there. And this one, to me, is a must buy. But I'm keen to know what you think. Are you gonna pick up one of these little blighters from Corsair? Do you have your eyes set on something else? Go ahead and let me know in the comments. And as always, like if you enjoyed the video, subs if you loved it, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.